I'd like to welcome you all here this morning to our Sabbath school. Now, this is a Roanoke program, uh, the Roanoke Local Church program. However, uh, due to uh, Brother Gennady, who is the Sabbath school superintendent for, for Roanoke, is uh, incapacitated at the moment, uh, just a little, <laughs> uh, I've been uh, asked to uh, assist this morning with the program. So, uh, but uh, um, I trust uh, we'll uh, do, uh, uh, by God's grace, uh, do his... Uh, this job well, and that we may uh, be blessed this morning in our Sabbath school. Do you know, over the past four years, I've had a tremendous experience uh, in this department. As uh, most of you know, this is the first occasion that I've been uh, uh, the Sabbath school director for the general conference this last term. And uh, it was a new experience for me, and uh, I gained many wonderful uh, blessings as I fellowshiped with various brethren around the world. And for those of you who I did visit, you may remember the theme of the Sabbath school, the seminars that I was running, evangelism through the Sabbath school. Who remembers the seminars? Those who have been to the seminars, who remembers? Put your hand up if you remember the seminars. Yeah? Okay, quite a few. Good. Do you remember the seminars? Now I'm going to ask you two questions. And I think you may know which questions I'm going to ask you. Number one, what is the object of the Sabbath school? What's the object of the Sabbath school? Who has the answer? Huh? What's the object? And according to the spirit of prophecy, the object of the Sabbath school, all those who came to the seminar, what's the object? <laughs> to save souls, yeah? To the ingathering of souls. The ingathering of souls. So if the souls are to be gathered in, where are the souls? Where are they? They're out. <laughs> so what do we have to do? Go and find the souls and bring them in. Yeah? That's the object of the Sabbath school. Now the second question, and hopefully you'll remember this question because it was the most important question. What is the number one lesson for every member of the Sabbath school? Every superintendent, every teacher, every child in the Sabbath school. What's the number one lesson more important than the doctrine? Who remembers what it is? Councils on Sabbath school work tells us. Remember, the most important knowledge to be gained. What is it? Who remembers? Put your hand up if you remember. Don't, you've got to, look, I didn't, it looks like I, I may have not done a very good job the last four years. <laughs> I tried to teach you this lesson. <laughs> What's the number one lesson we have to learn? Yes, Brother Kawashi. Oh, praise the Lord. I was, I was successful with one. That's good. Thank the Lord for that. What is it? The most important knowledge is the experimental knowledge of what it means to be born again. More important than the doctrine. That you'll find that in councils on Sabbath school work. Remember the seminars we did? Who remembers that lesson now? Put your hand up if you remember the lesson. Okay, good. So this morning... When we're taking through the lessons, keep these objects in your mind. That it, our object in the Sabbath school is to impart the knowledge, the practical knowledge of what it means to be born again to our students. So with this now, I'd like to... Um, now, we're not going to do a second hymn this morning because I've been, been uh, uh, bombarded with requests for items. <laughs> but I don't have enough much time. So what we'll do 
I'd like to invite, firstly, um, brother from uh, Colombia, brother Nasareno, yeah, Nasareno Turushina from Colombia, and he would like to praise the Lord with a solo item. Thank you. Para honra y gloria del Señor, en esta mañana quiero presentar una ofrenda a Él, un himno titulado Mi Cristo Amado. Thank you. I'd like to now invite Brother Chongi uh, Matias to lead us through the review of the lesson for last week. Thank you, Brother Chongo. Oh, before I do, though, is there anyone who does not have a lesson pamphlet? Okay, that we have here are extras in Spanish, Espanol, y in Igles, English, English and Espanol. Okay. So just put your hand up. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. And the children, put your hand up if you're a child. Anyone here who's a child? Okay. We have a few back there. All right. We have a special program for the children. So if they'd like to make their way, which way, Brother Gennady? Uh, Okay, brother, Bo where's brother, oh, there he is, brother Bobby, thank you, brother Bobby, and the children, there's brother Bobby there, just follow brother Bobby, and he'll take you into the, uh, the room assigned for your program. Okay, thank you. So, if everyone has a lesson to look on with, look on uh, to, and 
And also, there are some tithes and offerings envelopes if you would uh, like to give these, uh, give your tithes and offerings to the Lord. They are available uh, at the uh, table there at the back. Okay, thank you, Brother Chongi. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'd like to thank the Lord, first of all, for these wonderful Sabbath school lessons that we study. The title of our Sabbath school pamphlet for this quarter is amazing. Who remembers? Hearing the voice of God. If you look around us um, in this world, what do we find? We find a lot of confusion. We find darkness. We find uncertainty. We find difficulties. And there is one thing that is sure in your journey towards heaven, that is to follow the voice of God. And today's Sabbath school lesson, actually the, the previous Sabbath school lesson, our review Sabbath school lesson, is talking about how, how to identify the voice of God, how to discern the voice of God. And I really like the verses, uh, the verse taken from Isaiah chapter 5, verse um, 20 and 21, where it says that um, there, is, there are people that call evil good and good evil. Is this true for today? The world is really full of this kind of ideology. Whatever it has been considered good up till now, now is considered evil. And whatever is con was considered evil in the past, it is considered now good, in so much so that they're actually promoting it um, as good. So let's just um, have a few snapshots of our um, previous Sabbath school lesson that we studied in regards to discerning what is right and what is wrong. There is one thing that we need to do in order to be able to discern what is right and what is wrong. Who would like to e be able to tell me what is important? Um, Sister Kati? That's correct. But even before that, there is something that we really, really need to um, come to a conclusion in, our, in ourselves. We have to determine to listen. We have to determine our s in ourselves that we want to study the word of God, that we want to hear um, the voice of God. Now, Sister Kati answered my next question, which would have been, how do we know what is um, the voice of God? How can we be sure that we are hearing the voice of God? Because we have many, many voices in this world. But how can we be sure that we are hearing the voice of God? How can we be sure? Who would be able to tell me how can we be sure um, that we are actually hearing the voice of God? We are uncertain about that. How can we, we hear many, many voices. There is one, sister, yep. That's correct. And when we study the word of God, then we, we know it for sure. It says there in, um, in um, John chapter 10, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, because they also know the voice of God, because they have an, experiment, uh, an, ex uh, an experience with hearing the voice of God. Now, if we look at um, the history, what was the history like? the history of, um, of God's people in the past, was it always positive or was there times when it was not positive? Was it always positive? Did they always listen to God's voice? How do, how do we find when we study the, the history? Brother David? What we find here is that by the time that Jesus came to show them the truth, Pilate says, why are you here? And Jesus says, I'm here to show the truth. By then, the testimonies tell us that it was difficult for Jesus to teach them lessons 
because their own ideas, their own traditions and maxims became as important or even more important than the word of God, the word they couldn't discern. And then there is in the lesson, and I, and I cannot let this section pass without reading these words, there is instruction for us as well. In the middle of the second paragraph there, it says that the disciples were to teach what Christ had taught, that which he had spoken, not only in person, but through all the prophets and teachings of the Old Testament is here included. Human teaching is shut out. There is no place for tradition, for man's theories and conclusions, or for church legislation. So God asks us to study the scriptures. And in history, they forgot this, and they suffered the consequence. They could not accept Christ because they didn't have the scriptures, and we will not be able to accept Christ if we don't study the scriptures for ourselves. That's correct. They replaced uh, the voice of God with traditions, and that's the danger we, we are facing today at all times. Now, the next um, point um, is talking about um, how to listen to that small, still voice. Uh, do you believe that the conscience uh, is very, very important in our spiritual journey, to listen to that still voice? How important it is, brother? Apreciados hermanos, eh, cuando nosotros no escuchamos la voz de Dios, when we do not listen the voice of God, nuestra conciencia se endurece. Our conscience it gets hardened. Eh, cuando estaba estudiando, when I was studying, encontré que hay tres tipos de conciencia. I found that there is there are three types of conscience. Una conciencia buena otra mala y una cauterizada. One good conscience, one evil conscience, and one that is a um, seer, seer conscience. Entonces, para que la conciencia no se cauterice, so in a way that the conscience uh, may not be seer, debemos de escuchar la voz de Dios a través de los diferentes medios. So we need to listen to the voice of God through different means. Y solamente estudiando la Biblia y el Espíritu de la profecía, and it is only by the study of the Bible and the Spirit of prophecy, Dios tiene un mensaje para nosotros. It, uh, God has a message for each one of us. Y debemos recordar que solamente en Jesús podemos encontrar esa fuente de salvación. And we should remember that only in Jesus we can find this source of uh, salvation. Thank you very much, brother. That is, um, that is a great idea or a great answer um, because um, sometimes we actually suppress that good, good conscience and um, we are in trouble. Now, what should we do when, um, or what, um, what should we do when we hear uh, different voices in our, hand, in our head and uh, we're trying to find out which one is the right and um, we find out, as, we, as the brother mentioned, that we study in the Bible and we find out that this is the right way, but something in us tells us that we should not follow that. What is our problem as Christians? We are not honest with ourselves. Dishonesty is a very big problem. So therefore, we have to learn how to be, be honest with ourselves first and then with others. Brother Radu, please. Uh, you, you said about uh, many voices in the in the same time. Some are, are ours, in parentheses, from the evil, yeah, from the enemy. But we we tend to say that's my impression, yeah. Some of them are from from the Lord. Uh, the note says that impressions and sentiments have not to rule our uh, our life, but the Lord has to rule our life. Now, how can we discern? Uh, God's word, God's speaking, soft, soft voice of him, is in accordance with thus said the, the Lord in the Bible. That's right. So we have to check every time which voice is in accordance with that thing and which is not. And if we choose to hear and to accept that voice, we uh, uh, have a better radio with God. I, I was thinking, how can we compare... Uh, trying to put together the two questions that you gave, you, you put to us. 
how can we compare our reception unit yeah, that we call conscience in, in the, yeah, our world here? It's like a radio or it's not? It, look, it looks like it's not. In a radio, you listen and okay, you receive the wha what's transmitted. Yeah. But if you don't listen, you don't listen. When you, after three weeks, you enter a new, it's the same uh, level, it's the same thing. With the conscience, it's not like that. When you don't listen, First next time. time when you try to tune to receive, it's softer, it's weaker. Uh, you don't listen, next time it's even weaker. And little by little comes a time in which that transmission cannot be recepted by your unit. Your radio went dead. It's like shrinking. Uh, otherwise around, yeah, if we obey because we love the Lord and because he loves us, yeah, we, we obey. Okay, I don't want to obey my sentiments, my inclinations, whatever. I want to obey him. Next time when I'm tuning, yeah, to receive, it's, it's stronger. Yeah, the unit is better. Next time, yeah, obeying this time, it's even stronger. And s at the end, it's Enoch life. Everything becomes clear. It's like walking with him next to you. It's, and the last step will be in heaven. Thank you very much, Brother Radu. I think you summarized the Sabbath school lesson beautifully, um, that we have to tune into the voice of God and stay tuned and stay um, connected to that voice, otherwise um, the other voices became become very strong and this small voice um, disappears after a while. May the Lord give us uh, meekness and humility and discernment uh, above all things that we may be able to hear his voice at all times. May we walk in his voice and in his will. My wish and prayer is for every one of us this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, look, I uh, have a, a, a special, another special item. I'd like to invite the uh, the uh, Zimbabwe, the group from Zimbabwe, brother. Here, are they here? Zambia, Zambia, Zambia. Sorry, brother. Z Zambia. Yeah. Thank you. If you'd like to please come forward, and they'd like to praise the Lord with a, a song. The special item that we are going to give is in Bemba, our local language. And it speaks about Christ being the husbandman, and we are the vineyard, and he's looking out for the fruits that he can, he can eat, spiritual fruits.
Thank you. We have brethren from all continents of the earth here today, and it's so wonderful to, to hear in different languages these different songs. But you know, in one, into the law, there's one language, the language of Canaan. And uh, I look forward to when we can all get to heaven and uh, all understand without translation those wonderful words. But in our hearts, we all sing the same tune. Isn't that true? The love of Jesus in our hearts, it's, uh, it's the same tune we all sing together. Well, this now, we'd like to go into the lesson for the day. Now, English, we're going, Brother Jory Cruz is going to take the English class from the front here. Now, for those who wish to uh, have the classes in, we have assigned for Spanish, uh, Portuguese and Romanian, uh, the larger classes. Um, the, the Portuguese, if you go into the, the room behind this one, which is the dining room for the Portuguese, for the Romanian, it'll be in where we were holding the doctrinal committee room. Okay, for those, do you know where that room is? The Romanian brethren knows where that room is? Yep, okay, for the doctrinal committee room, for the Romanian brethren. And for the, um, the Spanish brethren. Uh, how many Spanish, can you put your hand up if you'd like to have a Spanish class? Put your hand up. The Spanish brethren, okay, all right. There should be enough there for the room is where we had the nominating committee room. Who, the brethren in the nominating committee, Brother Joffrey, you know where that is. Now, Brother Joffrey would, would be the teacher for the Spanish, Brother Joffrey Castro. Uh, brother, uh, um, brother Borges for the Portuguese and Brother Fivi Pico for the Romanian class. Okay, now the French brethren, put your hand up for the French brethren here. Okay, we have a small class of French brethren. And um, if it's possible to find a table in the back of the dining hall there, or else one of the little, little rooms off the side here, okay? But there's not room there for the French brethren. And uh, for the others, we'll have, I think the only one I have left here is Russian brethren. Okay, well Brother Lee will take the French brethren to the uh, conference room. Now, for the Russian brethren, put your hand up if translation into Russian. No? No? Okay? Romanian is okay? All right, for the Romanian brethren. Okay, very good. All right, so if we can just divide into our classes now. And we'll have 30 minutes, brethren. Okay, so we're back here by, by 10.35. Brethren, you have 30 minutes, 10.35 to be back here. Oh, yes, sorry, brother, all the youth, the youth, and that's brother uh, Radu. If you stand up, brother Radu, that's brother Radu there. So for the youth class, put your hand up for the youth. Yep, all right. So we're going to go off, and I think uh, brother Gennady, is there a room for the youth class in this building, do you think? Otherwise, just outside just outside the, 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 the building here, okay, to my left, all right, for the youth class. So for the English, if you'd like to, uh, as I said, to remain here for the English, and anyone else can translate it from the, from the uh, uh, rows, from your chairs, if you need other translations. If the translator could just sit in that group in the chairs, okay? So this is it. So you want to move forward, the English class? Come on, you want to move forward? <laughs> You're okay back there? Huh? Is it okay? All right, I'll, I'll hand it over now to Brother Cruz. Thank you. Good morning. Blessed Sabbath to you. It's a pleasure to be with you here this Sabbath day. And also it's a pleasure of sharing God's word with you. We study a very important lesson, hearing the voice of God. That's a process. We need to educate ourselves to listen to the voice of God. We need to learn. I know that if I do a test here, if I ask a brother, uh, 
If I ask uh, Brother Suresh Kumar to go outside in here, if you could listen to his voice, I know that you can identify Brother Suresh Kumar, but only by his voice, even though you cannot see him. Why? Because you know him. You have listened to him many, many times. And then you can identify him only by his, his voice. Then we need to educate ourselves to identify God's voice among many other voices. And that is a, that is a process. We need to learn to do, to do that. But the problem is not only to listen to the voice, hear the voice. We need also to learn to obey the voice, to follow the voice. Otherwise, we can fall in that problem that we are going to start today. To be what? Stubborn. Beware of stubbornness. I remember when I was a child, my mommy called me once. I was playing with other kids. I listened to her voice. But I continued my, my game there with the boys, and she called me twice. I did not answer. She called me the third time. I continued to play there. And after she called me more than three times, she came. But when she came, she had to spank me. Because I listened to her voice, but I did not obey her voice when she called me. That can happen with us in regard to listening to the voice of God. What is the, what's the meaning? What is the definition? What is the connotation of the word stubborn? Stubbornness. Can you help me? What the meaning, what the definition of the word is stubbornness? Yes, uh, I went to dictionary and I find some definitions there I'd like to share with you. Unreasonably obstinate. It says obstinately unmoving. Fix it or set in purpose or opinion. Resolute. Says he also obstin obstinately maintained as a course of a action. Another definition here, difficult to manage or suppress. Another meaning is hard, tough, or stiff. Maybe from that word comes the word stiff-necked, no? As stone or wood, difficult to shape or work. That's the meaning of the word stubborn. And we have in the Bible a classical example of stubbornness. Who is that man? Hmm? Pharaoh. That word uh, we are going to study today. We can see that the great part of our lesson uh, study about Pharaoh because we have a very good example here of stubbornness. Um, the Bible verse, Psalms 2, 1 and 12, it says, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. He is the Son. Let's be angry and depart from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a, a little, blessed are they that put their trust in him. And the Christ Subject Lesson, page 201, says, When the appeals of the Holy Spirit come to the heart, our only safety lies in responding to them without delay. It is unsafe to delay obedience. You may never hear the invitation again. 
we know that the, the, the process of hardening the heart is, gr is gradual. When we delay to obey the voice of God, what happens in our hearts? We start to harden the, the heart. Then let's go to, to the to Pharaoh. Um, I have a question here when you talk about Pharaoh. In the uh, book of Exodus chapter 9, verse 12, it says, And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. How is that? Do we believe that uh, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh to destroy him, to destroy the nation? H how is that? How can we harmonize? How can we understand it here? Who hardened the heart of Pharaoh? Was God? How that happened? Can we consider that? I like to listen to different to opinion. Yes, yes, sister. When you have clay that has been wet and it's in the sun, it becomes hard. That's simply a law of nature. And the same thing happened with Pharaoh's heart. The Lord allows these things to happen because it's a law of nature. And the stubbornness that you're talking about is what Pharaoh indulged in to such an extent that he was like the clay that became hard when the sun hit it. Yes. Um, <laughs> anybody else want to say something, sister, there? It says here that Pharaoh resisted the truth and the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from him. Yes. Yes. Anybody else would like to talk about? Yes, brother Luke. I, I, have, not, I have not thought bef about that earlier much more, but uh, it's interesting uh, Moses uh, and Aaron come to Pharaoh and say, our God says, let my people go. And uh, at initial stage, I'm just wondering, uh, on which ground should Pharaoh have let them go? I mean, uh, did he have evidence about God before that? That's something to think about, that because definitely he resisted, even at the first instance, the voice of God. But it was not good. And later on, it became easier for him to repeat the same. Then let us understand very well, he was not the God that hardened his heart. Him himself, you know? The Lord spoke with him. The Lord sent the warnings. The Lord sent the message to him. Let my, my people go. We can see here. How, how many times the Lord talked with him? How many times the Lord sent Moses to talk with him? Not only once. Twice. Many, many times. Maybe ten times the Lord sent the message to him. And every time that he said, I will not let the people go. I want to let people go. So in this process, his heart was hardened. And the Lord says here, the, 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 the scripture of C and 1B says, God speaks to men. That's a lesson for us also. God speaks to men through his servants, giving cautions and warnings and rebuking sin. He gives to each an opportunity to correct his errors before they become fixed in the character. But if one refuses to be corrected, divine power does not interpose to counteract the tendency of his own action. He finds it more easy to repeat the same course 
He is hardening the heart against the influence of the Holy Spirit. A further rejection of light places him where a far strong influence will be ineffectual to make an abiding impression. That what happened with the Pharaoh, that what can happen with us. If you are in a wrong path, in a wrong way, in a wrong course of action, the Lord come to you. The Lord can use it, someone to approach you, to warn you, to show you that you are in a wrong way. If you resist that voice, that resistance is a process of hardening, hardening the heart. That is also what we call also the sin against the Holy Spirit. You can get, you can put yourself in a in a such position that you can no longer listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Brother David. Is it? Hardened is the word chazak, which among its definitions means to confirm. So when it says that God hardened the heart, it's saying that the things that happened during the ten plagues confirmed what was already in the heart of Pharaoh. It's not that God put those things there, but what was in Pharaoh's heart was confirmed. And God permitted everyone, including the Hebrew people, to see what was really in Pharaoh's heart. And that's why when I, when I look back at the origin of the word, I can understand exactly what you were saying. This is what it is saying. It was confirming what was in his heart already. I'd like to bring another point here. Uh, sometimes some people, they confuse the meaning of the word stubborn with to be resolute to be firm in some opinion. Uh, do you know, sometimes we need to be firm in our opinion, especially when our opinion is based on God's word. We must be immovable. Th that's what we, we read in, in the Bible. But you no, know, uh, when we talk about stubbornness, we talk about you have all the evidences that the Lord is talking to you you have all the evidence that you are in a wrong way, and the Lord are sending, he proves, the Lord are sending warnings, and you are still in the same, in the same way. Can you see the difference here? Then uh, stubbornness is not, is not to be firm or resolute in some, in some, in some good course, in course of action. It's it very clear, no? What was the price of rebellion. What's the price to be stubborn? Someone want to help us here on Monday lesson? What's the price of to be stubborn? Brother Suresh Kumar, can you help us here? In the case of Pharaoh, what, what was the price? First of all, he rejected the truth, so he's departed from that which is good, a blessing. Secondly, that which all he had, his pride, his honor, his kingdom, his domain, including his children, he lost everything. Not only he lost the truth, he lost everything. Being stubborn can result in losing everything, including your life yeah. eternally. In our case here, what is the price of to be stubborn, stubbornness? What is the price? It's the same, no? If you are stubborn in a wrong way, even though you are rebuked by the Lord, you can hard your heart, then you need to, to suffer the consequences. Um, the, the, the note of 2b says, the Lord gave Pharaoh evidence of his power by working signs and miracles before him. The great I am acquainted Pharaoh with his mighty works, showing him that he was the ruler of heaven and earth. 
But the king chose to defy the God of heaven. He would not consent to break his proud, stubborn heart even before the king of kings, that he might receive the light. For he was determined to have his own way and work out his rebellion. He chose to do his own will and set aside the command of God. In very evidence, giving him that Jehovah was above all the gods of the nation, above all the wise men and musicians, only served to blind his mind and harden his heart. Uh, a question, according to the question C here, to C. What's, yes, the Arolo. It's very interesting that the, the counselors of the king, the magicians, came to him and says, this is the finger of God. Listen to it. But the king says, who is this God? The first time when Moses came to him, Pharaoh said, who is this God? But was the king not uh, acquainted with the real God? Yes, he was. Why? Because Moses came to him and says, the God of the Hebrew. Does he know the Hebrew people? Yes, he did. Does he know the, 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 his people and his religions? Yes, it was in his kingdom. But this people of God was defiant of his religion and in his customs. And there was a pain in the neck for him. And he was not going to recognize the God of his slaves to be a great God. He was determined not to know the God of his slaves. That was the point uh, that made him very upset and settled in his ways. You know that uh, he believed that uh, he was God. And he believed the gods of Egypt was uh, were powerful than the gods of the of the people, of the Israelites. But uh, the Lord had to show his power. Yeah, brother, brother Dragon. Interessante da crise e mecanismo e pouco que se gostava de ir nascer teu. It's interesting to note here that the similar processes operate in our body. Se se põe ne cabole que de problem. Whenever uh, an, an, a disease occurs or a problem. Tada uh, isterite skasila pot pokušava da reši taj problem. So the healing da power, the problem. healing power attempts to resolve that issue. So it goes for a while. Yeah. So that stage of a disease or healing process or is called reversible. It can be reversed. Yeah, but, but if the pathological process continues and goes beyond the power of the healing process, and at some point in time, Ta rever, so that pathological process, the disease becomes irreversible. I šta je onda? And what's the solution at that time? Chirurgia, tog dela. Yeah, so at that time, the surgery has to step in and remove or cut out that part. Ako se to taj, taj if, you, if we remove that tissue or organ, može doći do i do smrti it can lead to, uh, to, to sepsis and ultimately to death. So similar thing happened to Pharaoh. So he had to disappear from the face of earth. Yeah. Yes. So his heart and mind came to the point of uh, reach the irreversible stage. We can see here it's very dangerous to delay listening to the voice of God. If the Lord talks with you, don't delay to listen, to obey his voice. Otherwise, this, this process can happen in your life. Yeah, brother Suresh. Um. 
But we have to really understand the actual scenario of Egypt. Pharaoh was the God. And God of Israel is a slave God. A God, or maybe not even acknowledged as a God. To him, a God listening to a slave. This is the dividing and determination, determining point there. For him to lower down, to stoop to the level of a slave, to listen to the voice, is impossible. He never recognized, even after the manifestation of, after the manifestation of the uh, many times repeated manifestation of God's power, he failed to acknowledge that the God, so-called, the God of slave was a true God, the God of universe, and was powerful. So what is happening was he was actually was uh, um, because of his self-pride and he was so proud to acknowledge that somebody else has more power. So this is the situation for us too. Sometimes we esteem ourselves so higher that the the more and more, we just close to the still voice until it fades away and we hear nothing. And many times, we just only look at the Pharaoh and they say, he's a bad guy. And if you look at us in a mirror, the same thing. And the man's pride must be buried in the dust. That is the message of Christ of righteousness. So many times, we fail to recognize that. <coughs> the, the history of Egypt could be different. Could not? Of course. Could it be different if Pharaoh obeyed the voice of the Lord? If, the, if it, when the Lord said, let me, my people go, if he had listened to the voice of God and allowed the people to go, Egypt could be saved from all those plagues that ruin the, the nation. The same, the same with us here. Of course, Tuesday, that's a warning, warning for us, no? The Lord talking by his servant, the Lord talking our conscience, the Lord used different means to talk to our, to, our, yeah, to our souls. And if we refuse to listen to the voice of God, the second impression of the Holy Spirit will be hard to listen to. And the third, the hard, and that the process of hardening the heart. That's why the 3A, the last part says, the note of 3a, one cherish the sin will, little by little, debase the character, bring all its nobler power into subjection to the evil desire. The removal of one safeguard from the conscience, the indulgence of one evil habit, one neglect of the high claims of duty breaks down the defenses of the soul and opens the way for Satan to come in and lead us astray. What, if we realize that we have the spirit of Pharaoh, what must we do? You know, once my, uh, I ask, I, 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 I dare, I venture to ask my wife, do you believe that I am stubborn? We were driving the car. I asked, do you believe that I am stubborn? You know, she, she did not wait one minute to answer. She said, of course you are. <laughs> I was a little bit shocked. I, I, I got the answer that uh, I needed to listen to. I need. Sometimes it's not the answer that uh, I want to, to listen, to hear. But what I need, then uh, uh, I ask her, can you give me some, some example? And she gave me <laughs> several times that I was stubborn, that helped me, help me to, to understand that I was that course of action. And uh, we need also to, to ask ourselves, am I a stubborn person? Sometimes I, I am so fixed in my opinion, in my, in my way. Even though people come to me and say a different way, I, I have evidence that I am wrong. 
can happen here even, even in, our, in our delay session here, no? We believe the Lord talks about his people. We believe that the, talk, the Lord talks about the majority that we are here. Am I right or not? That's what we studied before. And we are here, we sit down here, we talk here, we discuss, we pray, we ask the Lord to the Holy Spirit to, to work in our minds, in our hearts, and we, we come with some conclusion here. Sometimes 7 or 8%, 19% of, of the delegates here get a conclusion here. Because it was not according to my opinion, according to my idea, I could no, I am going to continue the way that I always teach the people. No, we need to be humble. We need to submit. Otherwise, our heart can be hardened like it happened with Pharaoh. And um, Wednesday, the result of refusing to listen. Um, we already talked uh, talk about that. No, we know what happened with the, what was the end of Pharaoh. He had to to see all the nation destroyed, and finally, he he saw the dead face of his own own son. What was someone? Yes, brother, brother. But I want to consider the another point of view. According to Pharaoh, the Moses was very stubborn. Moses was very stubborn because many times they offered how to worship. Okay. And he also yielded, according to Pharaoh, his first opinions. Many times he said, first time he said he sh they should worship it in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But after some times he said you can go to three days journey. He said, but he said no. Mm -hmm. So the Moses was very stubborn according to him. Now this problem comes even these days. What is stubbornness? And uh, if we just go to the word stubborn, both of them stubborn. But as we know that this stage of this virus, there is no, no remedy. Okay. And I think it is warning for us, really warning for us, to listen to the voice of God through the audition message. Uh, maybe we can we can say uh, stubborn always there is a negative connotation. We uh, maybe we cannot say that uh, Moses was stubborn. We can say Moses was firm in his resolution to follow the Lord. Firmness to be firm in God's word is not to be stubborn. Do you get the point here? Maybe to to be stubborn when you have all the evidence that you are wrong and you still continue the same path in the same, in the same way. But I, they, they make me mention that here we have only, only uh, two minutes. Yes. Uh, our time is almost we're up. Tol we're told in scripture to be firm as a rock to principle. We're also told to be of a humble and contrite spirit. And again, I think of the illustration of, of of clay. Clay hardens in the sun. Wax melts. We need to have a soft, tender heart so that when the word of the Lord comes to us, we may be, we may be purified by it. The next thing you were thinking, I think, also was who else benefited from this situation. The children of Israel saw this so that they would not be confirmed in idolatry. They would realize how terrible it was. And they would be softened by seeing this to realize how bad idolatry really is. Did finally Pharaoh obey the voice of God? Finally? Yes. He let the people go? Yes. But what was the, the circumstance? He was forced to do so. Otherwise, all the nation would be, would be destroyed. Um, we have another example in the Bible about stubbornness. What's another example that we have here? 
Balaam. Uh, the Lord talked with him. And very interesting, the Lord had to use a S to talk with him, no? How many times? The S could, he, could he see the angel, but Balaam, because he was stubborn, he could not see the angel. And we know by the experience here, after the third time that the he he hit the, the ass, finally says his eyes were open and he could see the the angel of the Lord. But he was so stubborn he could not realize that he was speaking with the AS. So stubborn that he was. Sometimes uh, the Lord uses uh, different means, no? To talk with us. I hope that the Lord doesn't need to use a S to come to talk with us here. We can listen to the voice of God. My daddy told me an experience that he said. Some students came to the evangelist. He said, do you believe what the Bible says that a donkey talk? It's impossible. You believe that the donkey talk with the, like a man? And the evangelist said, no. In the, in the old times, uh, the donkeys talk like men. And today we see men talk like donkeys. We don't need to wait uh, so long to listen to the voice of God. If the Lord comes to you, no matter means the Lord used to talk with you. Could it be for a humble servant? Could it be to the, a preaching? Could it be for uh, different means? If the Holy Spirit tells you that the voice of God talk to your heart, he proving, helping you, please don't delay. Don't hard your heart. Otherwise, you can suffer the same consequence as Pharaoh, as the Egyptians, but that's not the will of God. The, the Lord wants us to lead us in the right way, the right path. The Lord wants to lead us to, to his kingdom. May the Lord help us and be with us, not to be stubborn. Don't you forget, ask yourself today, at the, at the end of the lesson here, am I a stubborn person? If the Holy Spirit convinced me that I am a stubborn person, lesson, let's ask the Lord to, to break our hearts and to teach us to be humble, to listen to him. Amen. Amen. So what do we need to be aware of? St stubbornness, correct. So may God bless us uh, with a tender heart that is willing not only to hear his voice, but to follow that voice, whatever it may uh, mean for us, whatever it may cost that we may uh, always be found in his will. Okay, so if we could, just waiting for our classes to come back, the uh, other language classes to join us again. And uh, then on the program, we'll have a special item to close with. But before we do that... There will be a, is Brother Joe here? Yeah. There will be collection of tithes and offerings. And due to the time uh, constraints this morning, we are going to close just with a special item. And that will be um, uh, the brethren uh, who uh, informed me this morning, the quartet. And uh, we'll be closing with the quartet and then a prayer to end our Sabbath school this morning. So just if the quartet could get themselves ready, but in the meantime, we'll be now collecting our free will 
uh, offerings and, and tithes um, in uh, honor of the Lord. Thank you. Dear brethren, let us bow our heads as we ask for a blessing upon this offering. Gracious Father in heaven, we come before you to thank thee for the blessings you give to us each day. We thank you for life and strength and health and thank you for the um, capabilities, Lord, to earn our means, that uh, provide for all of our needs. And we, as we rendered a portion of that back to you in thanksgiving, we ask you to bless this to your honour, to your glory, that your name may be glorified and your cause may be uh, prosecuted uh, faithfully and wisely in this part of the vineyard. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, we're going to close. As I said, we're due, to, due to time constraints, we're just going to close now with uh, a special item, uh, the men's quartet. So if the brethren would like to come forward and we, they would like to praise God with this item and then we'll have the prayer to close with and that'll be the prayer of Brother Nehemiah Chang is present with us. Thank you, Brother Nehemiah, to close with the prayer after the, um, uh, the uh, item. Thank you. And do you need a... Thank you. 
you scared of the cat or you are you scared of the cat? Oh, oh Radu. Okay. Yeah, the, did someone wind the youth class up? No? Okay. All right, we're going to sing then. Let us uh, open our hymnals and we'll sing and we'll leave the special item maybe for uh, the afternoon after meeting. Okay? Thank you. So let us sing then together our closing hymn, hymn number 148. Sing them over again to me. Thank you. We'll just do the first and last verse. First and last verse, number 148. Yeah. Uno, cuatro, ocho. Let us kneel uh, with a closing prayer, Brother Nehemiah Chang. Thank you. Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we kneel before thee in the name of Jesus. We thank thee for the wonderful words of life. As we studied the precious words, we realize our stubbornness. Father, we ask thy forgiveness of our stubbornness because we are delaying the second coming of Christ. Help us that we may take this warning seriously and help us to become honest with our souls. And help us that we may not delay thy work on this earth. And help us that we may not go to stage of when there is no remedy. We thank thee for the message of loud issue. Help us that we may accept the advice of Jesus to buy gold. gold To accept white cloth. To have this eye serves so that we may see thy will and want the wonderful word of truth. We thank thee for thy grace and we pray also for the second service will continue. Prepare us our heart so that we may able to this 
to understand thy will and hear thy voice. We pray also thy children and the whole world. Help them and give them thy grace and guide them through thy Holy Spirit so that as a united people we may hasten the coming of Christ. Accept our prayer in the most precious name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, thank you, brethren. We'll be um, commencing the hour of worship service at 11 a.m., which is five minutes' time. So it'll be a little short break, and uh, then we'll go into the hour of service. So thank you all for your participation in the Sabbath school this morning, and may God bless us for the rest of this Sabbath day. Thank you.